just kidding. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الله وملائكته يسلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا مولانا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا مولانا محمد وبارك وسلم صل عليه مولا يسل وسلم دائما أبدا على حبيبك خير خلق كلهم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته all of those who are connected and all of those who uh, will get a chance to view this video at a later time Today we're starting the new section on the uh, birth of the Blessed Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and uh, this is the fourth chapter of the Burda Sharif. I'm reading from the mainstay which is a text uh, translated by Sheikh Ibn Al, uh, uh, of Sheikh Ibn Al Ajib Ibn Ajiba and uh, which is a commentary of um, Imam Sharafuddin al Busiri Rahmatullah's Burda Sharif. So, the very first verse, uh, <coughs> couplet that starts this section, <coughs> excuse me. Abana Mauliduhu an Tibi un Surihi, Yatiba Muptada im Minhu wa Mukh Tatami. His birth, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, made the purity of his pedigree evident. How pure were his beginning and his end sallallahu alaihi wasallam in this uh, first uh, couplet from the prophet uh, sallallahu alaihi wasallam's birth in the burda sharif as explained in the burda sharif imam al busiri rahmatullah alayhi uh, describes the birth of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam uh, from a pure pedigree he says that all that manifested during the Prophet Sallallahu birth of palpable signs, clear portents, and wondrous breaks with normal phenomena, khawarik lil adat, which are the miracles uh, uh, that, that occurred at that time, point to his lofty rank, his noble station, and his advent, his coming. The miraculous events and extraordinary happenings that appeared during his birth made clear uh, his pure origin, his lofty rank and, and the divine concern of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for him. The miracles and the extra, extraordinary signs that manifested during the Prophet wasallam's birth were amazingly numerous and are as familiar as the sun over the horizon. People are unanimous in agreement about the authenticity of those signs. Among the signs is that when the blessed mother of our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Amina bint Wahab, the Prophet Sallallahu mother, received the good news that she was pregnant with the Prophet Sallallahu she was told, you are carrying the master of this nation. So when he is born, you must supplicate. I seek refuge for him in the one, Al-Wahid, from the evil of every envier. And then you must name him Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When she was pregnant with him Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, she saw a light that emitted from her that lit up the palaces of Bostra. This is in the Levant, which was in the Sham. Al Suhaili rahmatullah says that that was the beginning, that was because Allah granted him victory over the lands, and the servants in that region sought illumination from his light and received through him guidance and mercy. Among the signs, is that he was born, sallallahu alaihi wasallam? When he was born, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam raised his head up and looked towards the heavens. Among the signs is that Umm Uthman ibn Abil As, 
saw the stars draw near and light manifested during the Prophet Sallallahu birth until all that she could see was light. Among the signs was that the collapse of Khisro's arch, the Iwan, meaning his palace, and the drying up of Lake Tiberias and the receding of its waters. Among the signs is that the sacred fire of the Zoroastrians, the uh, per, uh, fire worshippers, was extinguished, and the devils were assailed with flaming meteors that thwarted the ab ability to spy on the news that was that is in the celestial realm. Among the signs is that the group of people from the Quraysh had an idol that they venerated and to which they would sacrifice animal offerings. But on the day of the birth of the Prophet ﷺ, they saw that the idol fell over, uh, over and landed upon its face. They picked the idol up again, and again it fell down upon its face. They did it for the third time, and the third time it did the same thing again. This disturbed them. And the Quraysh pulled back. Why does it keep falling over? They said. This can be only the result of some extraordinary event that has taken place. They looked to see what was the significant event that may have taken place and that happened on, the, on that day and then they found that the Prophet ﷺ was born on that day. Among the signs is that when he was born, the Prophet ﷺ's mother sent a message to his grandfather Abdul Muttalib informing him of the birth of his grandson and requesting that he visit her to see him. He arrived and looked at the Prophet ﷺ and his mother related to him all of the wondrous things that happened during the time that she was, uh, that she uh, carried the Prophet ﷺ. Abdul Muttalib then took the Prophet ﷺ and entered the sacred precincts of the Kaaba, Masjid al-Haram, and supplicated and thanked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the blessings that he had given him. He then returned the Prophet ﷺ to his mother and set out to find a wet nurse. He, he found Halima bint Abi Dhuayb, who was to become his mother through nursing. Rahmatullah alayhi. Her story is well known and the mirac miraculous occurrences that happened during the time when she raised the Prophet ﷺ in, uh, in the desert is well described in the Oud called the Hamziya. As for his pure origins and uh, God goodly mention uh, that was made clear during his birth, the Prophet ﷺ is no doubt was from the noblest of his people, being born of such a father and mother. They both one were from the most noble of families. Ibn Abbas anhu said that truly Allah divided mankind into two groups. He, uh, Ibn Abbas anhu related that the Prophet said that truly Allah divided mankind into two groups meaning the companions of the right, the Ashab uh, al-Yameen, and the companions of the left, the Ashab al-Shemal. And he made the best of them in pedigree. I am therefore the best among the companions of the right. Then the Prophet said that Allah divided them into three groups. Who He, com he divided the companions of the right into three groups. And made me the best of the third, thirds. They are, the com they are the companions of the right. Those three groups were the companions of the right, the companions of the left, and the forerunners, as-sabiqun. And I am of the forerunners. Then Allah made each third into tri tribes and made the best of them in that respect. Again, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, and we have made you into people and tribes that you may get to know one another. The noblest of you in the sight of Allah is the most God-fearing among you. That's in the Quran, Surah number 49, Ayat number 13. Indeed, I am the most God-fearing of the people of the children of Adam alayhi salam. 
and the noblest of them in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then Allah established households and he placed me in the best of them. He said, Allah wants only to remove impurities from you, O members of the household, and to purify you to the utmost. This is in the Quran. It is related on the authority. Um, so I'm going to move on further to in the interest of time. Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhu related that the emissary of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Allah caused me to descend to the earth while Adam's loin, uh, while while in Adam alayhi salam's loins, and when He placed me in Nuh alayhi salam's loins, and then I was cast into the fire while I, uh, while in Ibrahim alayhi salam's loins, and Allah continued to transmit me through through noble and pure loins until I was born to the parents who had never committed fornication, to parents who had never. And he, all of the uh, generations of the Prophet ﷺ before him were all pure. The Prophet ﷺ's birth took place on the, 12, uh, on the 27th or the 28th day of the month of Rabi al Awal. It is also said that he was born on the 8th or on the 10th or on the 12th. The correct position, according to Ibn Ajiba is that it was on the 12th, the 12th of Rabi al Awal. And the scholars agree that the Prophet ﷺ was born on a Monday and that he was tasked with prophethood. He was given ba'athat, prophethood on a Monday in this world. And he migrated to Medina on a Monday and that he passed away on a Monday 11 years after the migration, after the Hijrah. So this verse that I related the... Um, Couplet Abana Mauliduhu and Tibi Unsurihi, his birth made the purity of his pedigree evident. When he came, all these miracles, all these occurrences that were happening, as I have just related, started occurring, and it made clear of his pure purity of his pedigree, the uh, taharat of his pedigree, and he, the lineage from which he came, and how pure. And then the author says, Ya Tiba Muqtada in Minhu wa Muqtata me. Oh, how pure was his beginning and his end, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Yawman tafarra safihi al-fursu annahumu qad unziru bi hulul al-bu'si wa niqami on the day the Persians intuited that they had been warned of looming misery and retribution. Uh, the use of the words was explained well by uh, Sheikh Ibn Ajiba uh, in that he uses the author Imam al-Busiri uses the word tafarrasa yawmun tafarrasa tafarrasa as a verb. And then Fors, which is Persia, Faris, right? So he uses uh, the, uh, the, the word Tafarrasa, which, in, in which has to do with Firasa. And Firasa means intuition. Intuition is a light from Allah and it's one of his secrets. With it, believers look and see things as if they are pre present before him. The uh, guidance that a person can acquire from his spiritual intuition is proportionate to the strength of his iman, his faith. It is possible that a person's intuition, spiritual intuition, may predict a future event and it takes ex shape exactly as he uh, predicted. Spiritual intuition or firasat is conveyed through presages and notions, just as a fearful person is given away by certain signs. Okay, So, that is firasat, and that has to do with believers. Uh, soothsayers, on the other hand, who, which they were known as kahins, right? These were people who uh, were like magicians, and they would they would receive news from the jinn uh, that had been taken that had that informed them. An inspired person is a muhaddath. Muhaddath. He is the one who receives news from angels and then he communicates it to others. Okay, so 
we do see this that these kind of things occur amongst the Sahaba Karam and it occurs amongst the Awliya Karam as well. <clears throat> so the difference between a soothsayer, the, the Kahin, and the Muhaddath is that the Kahin receives his news from the jinn and the Muhaddath receives his news from angels. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can also directly inspire a person's heart within the heart of an inspired person without thought, contemplation, or via an intermediary and about what will happen to that person in the future. Ibn Najib says, among such people inspired uh, is uh, Sayyidina Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Sayyidina Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu in his time appointed Sariya <coughs> bint Zunaym al-Khilji as the commander of an extraordinary force. Sariya radiallahu ta'ala anhu and his companions made contact with the enemy. But the enemy was vastly uh, had vastly outnumbered them and nearly wiped them out. Meanwhile, in Medina, far away from Sariya, Sayyidina Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu was addressing the people when suddenly <coughs> he began to speak about Sariya and his troops and then Allah disclosed their plight to Sayyidina Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu's heart and he began to cry out, O Sariya, take to the mountain. O Sariya, take to the mountain. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala conveyed Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu's cry to Sariya and Sariya and the Muslims who were with him took refuge in the mountain. <clears throat> and that was the cause of their survival. The Prophet وسلم, said about Sayyidina Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, <coughs> excuse me, about Sayyidina Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, uh, that amongst the nations before you, were they, ins they were inspired people, muhaddathun. And if there were, is anyone like him that, in, uh, that is in my nation, it will be Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu. In this couplet, now, what the author is explaining is interesting that he uses tafarrasa and the objection is that why would he use intuition or firasat for those people who were misguided with the, uh, the Furs, the people of Furs or Faris. And uh, that was explained uh, by the author, that uh, by Ibn Ajiba rahmatullahi that this is just the way in Arabic they use this uh, constructs in uh, in the Arabic language to match Faris with Firasa, for example. But everybody understands that that is not what is intended in the meaning of it. In other words, during the Prophet ﷺ's birth, there were extraordinary signs. It was a tremendous day in which marvels and signs appeared, many of which uh, pertain specifically to the Persians or the Al-Furs and their ru a ruler Al-Khisra, such as the collapse of the palace arch, the extinguishing of the sacred fire and the drying up of the lake, all of which will be re recounted in full, inshallah, in the next sections. When the Persians witnessed these occurrences, not to mention uh, they had received from the oracles, those who were predicting the future through the jinn, jinnat, in whom they had absolute trust and confidence. They discerned with their minds that misery was looming over upon them and felt that these were sure signs that their power was to scatter and that their empire was to fall and end in oblivion. Now, one uh, needs to... Uh, know that these were uh, kahin these were oracles they had nothing to do to do with the deen and so the word uh, tafarrasa is really has nothing to do with them right because they 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 and, and then the other thing is that they saw these signs and they deduced from the signs that this is what it meant it wasn't something that they were informed whether through jinn or uh, through angels so that is uh, is uh, the situation for them. They had no insight into that. And then the Prophet wasallam, when he was born, all of those jinnat who used to bring news to uh, to the oracles and to the um, kahins, that ended forever. So they would not get the news or they would get half-truths and things like that.
Okay. Uh, someone among the spiritual masters who was uh, who was asked about Firasa, and I thought this would be. Um, I think I'll I'll move on from this because there's quite a bit that the author talks about Firasat and then he talks about Imam Malik who having that Firasat and how he used to uh, know uh, about people and say about them before they would even open their mouths. Now I'm going to uh, jump to the next couplet Wabata Iwanu Kisra Wahwa Mun Sadi un Kashamli Ashabi Kisra Gaira Mul Taimi. والنار خامدة الأنفاس من أسف عليه عليه والنهر ساح العين من سدم وساء ساوة أن غادت بحيرتها ورد واردها بالغيظ حين ظمي كأن بالنار ما بالماء من بلل حزنا وبالماء ما بالنار من ضرم So these are two Four, four couplets that I'm going to talk about right now. Wabata i wanu kisra wahwa mun sadi un kashamli ashabi kisra gaira mul taimi. The night the throne room of Khisro became cracked. Khisro's people too crumbled never to be restored. Wanna rucha midatul anfasi min asafin. The sacred fire, grief-stricken, breathed its last. Alayhi wa nahru sahil aini min sadami. And the river Euphrates dried up out of worry. Wasa asa wa ta'an ghaadat buhayratuha. And the river, and, and Sawa was saddened by its lake drying up. Sawa was a town near the lake and the, and the, um, the Buhaira, which was called, um, yeah, the Buhaira of that town, dried up. Bahar. Waruddha wa ridwa bil ghaydi hina the me. And thirsty, uh, the thirsty who went to drink there came back in a rage. And this, these are all things that uh, happened. So I'm going to talk about each one of these. Inshallah ta'ala. Ka'anna bin nari ma bil ma'i min balalin. As if the fire from sorrow took on the water's wetness. Huznan wa bil ma'i ma bin nari min darami. And the water assumed the fire's quality of blazing. And this is interesting. So let's talk about each one of these. Wabata ewanu kisra wahwa mun sadiun kashamni ashabi kisra gaira mul ta'imi. In this couplet, the author, uh, Imam Busir rahmatullahi explains the signs and the outward causes by which the Persians had sensed the coming loss that they, uh, their might and the destruction of their empire. The loss of their might and the destruction of their empire. The interesting thing about all of these signs was that they were all unprecedented. Nothing like this had happened before in the known history and this was a first one of the signs is the shaking and the splitting of their palace <clears throat> the palace shook so violently on the night of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam's birth that it cracked and 14 logs fell from its upper most part the, the palace of the persians was so well built that they used to say that nothing would topple it except the trumpet the blowing of the surah, the trumpet, announcing the end, uh, the day of the judgment. Another of these signs, so that was the section Wabata Iwanu Kisra Wahwa Mun Sadi on the night the throne room of Khisra became cracked. And then Kashamli Ashabi Kisra Gaira Multa Imi. Khusra's people too crumbled and never uh, were never to be restored. Another of these signs is the, and the story goes again later on. Uh, if you look into the history on how uh, when eventually Sayyidina Abu Bakr uh, Umar anhu takes uh, the Persian Persians and that was the beginning of the uh, the end of the Persian Empire and how all of those people who thought that they had all this greatness they scattered and, they, and, and the Persian Empire broke up at that time into many different pieces 
um, the reference of that's not in this book. I'm just mentioning what what I knew about that. والنار خامدة الأنفاس من أسف عليه والنهر ساه العين من سدم the sacred fire, grief-stricken, breathed its last. Another of these signs is the extinguishment of the sacred fire which they had worshipped and venerated. The fire had been kindled and kept lit for 1,000 uh, plus years. But it went out on the day that the Prophet ﷺ was born into this world. One of the governors of Khisro wrote a letter to him to inform him of what had occurred. The date was recorded and it was the date when the beloved Prophet ﷺ was born in this world. The author makes it appear in the Alayhi wal nahru sahil aini min sadami. He makes it appear that the fire when it was extinguished was in a state of grief and sadness over its worshippers and servants who used to venerate it. So it was like huffing and puffing and going out. Another of the signs was sa asa wata an radat buhayratuha waruddha wariduha bil gaydihi nazami. Another of the signs is the drying up of the lake of Sawa. It had become so barren and dry that not a single drop of water was left, as if realities had been inexorably altered that day. It was as if the fire took off, uh, and then it says, It was as if the fire took on the quality of the water's wetness thereby becoming extinguished and doused. So the fire, which used to rage for 1,000 years, took on the quality of the water of the lake, which was the water which doused it. Right. And, or the, or the action of it being doused by water. And then he says, Hoznan bilma ima bin nari min daramin. And, as if the water took on the blazing quality, the water of the lake took on the blazing quality of the fire, thereby catching fire and burning and drying up. Okay, so this is really a beautiful um, uh, way in which Imam Sharifuddin al Busiri uses the two, the lake and the fire, and how uh, they take on the qualities of each other, as if they took on the qualities of each other, as ex when the Prophet came into this this world another of the signs was the collapse of all of the idols in the world in one village an idol had fallen on its face and its, and its inhabitants lifted it up back up again as soon as they put it back it fell once again they had lifted it up two or three times when suddenly a voice called out to them which they could bear witness which they could hear but they did not know the source and could not see it. It recited the following lines. It has fallen thanks to a newborn whose light has shone. It has fallen thanks to a newborn whose light has shone on all corners of the earth, east and west. The idols have toppled because of him. The idols have toppled because of him. The hearts of kings, east and west, have filled with dread. The fire in the land of the Persians let out its dry cry and went dark. The king of the Persians spent the night suffering the greatest of calamities. The soothsayers whose jinn would bring news of the unseen, the soothsayers whose jinn would bring news of the unseen, now have nothing to report from them, be it truth or lies. Ah, Hussein, abandon your waywardness and come to Islam and welcome... Uh, and a welcoming abode, and come to Islam in a welcoming abode. These then are the evident signs, clear miracles, and extraordinary events that Allah Most High manifested when the Prophet ﷺ was born. He manifested these signs out of esteem and divine concern for the Prophet ﷺ, and they were cause for the felicity of some and the damnation of others. 
Whoever Allah guides will not be led astray, and whoever He leads astray has no guide. O Allah, illuminate our hearts with ma'rifat of You, with gnosis of You, and cause us to die with the love for this noble Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ameen. وَمَا عَلَيْنَا إِلَّا الْبَلَاغُ الْمُبِينَ So this was the sections we covered the first uh, for six verses, six uh, couplets from the Burda Sharif. Uh, the first five. And inshallah ta'ala, we will continue on tomorrow. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you all uh, with the special blessings of the month of Rabi al-Awwal, the month of the birth of our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shower our hearts with his longing. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq to realize the rank of our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the difficulties that he had spent in his life to bring this beautiful deen to us, this beautiful faith to us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among those people who drink from the blessed hands of our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and his family and his companions on the, on the day of judgment. And may his du'as always be with, uh, with us and may we be worthy of his, um, to be called those who are part of his ummah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Mawlana Muhammadin wa ala Sayyidina Mawlana Muhammadin wa ala Sayyidina Mawlana I want to just uh, recite Fatiha. If you could recite three times Fatiha and uh, one time Fatiha and three times Qul Hu Allahu Ahad for uh, our Kashif Bhai and Shapara Bahans, Shaki Bhai's mother who passed away this morning. Um, she was a person who loved the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. She passed away in Rabi Al-Awwal. She wanted this month, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave her this month. Uh, we consider, you know, it is sad for us, but it's also uh, a happy day for those who get the honor of this month as well. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Mawlana Muhammadin wa 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 ala Sayyidina Mawlana مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين قل هو الله أحد الله سمد لم يلد ولم يلد ولم يكن له كفنا أحد قل هو الله أحد الله سمد لم يلد ولم يلد ولم يكن له كفنا أحد قل هو الله أحد الله سمد لم يلد ولم يلد ولم يكن له كفنا أحد also the same dua for the خالة of شقفتابن was it the خالة جو بهرين ميجن كان ذكر الوضع. يا أصحابي ماما. نحن جن كان ذك. أو أوكي. هو كندا ما خاتون تي جن كان ذكر الوضع. كوسر بنز. كوسر بنز ما ما ذا passed away. يا الله. We ask you to grant them a high مقام in Jannah. Forgive their shortcomings. Raise them among the salihat. Ya Rabbil Alameen, on the Day of Judgment, Ya Kareem, Ya Rahman, Ya Rahim, and grant us and grant them all the shafat of our beloved Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Mawlana Muhammadin wa ala Sayyidina Mawlana Muhammadin wa barak wa sallam sallam alayhi. Liqi la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. For those who are sick, Abdul Kareem uncle, as well as Haji Ramazan, Haji Sahab in Houston, and Shakir by his father, Ya Rabbil Alameen, grant them all shafai kaamin aajil ala Rabbil Alameen. اللهم صل على سيدنا مولانا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا مولانا محمد وبارك وسلم سلام عليه بقيل إلى الله محمد رسول الله. so yes let me read from the verses from the borda. أبان مولده عن طيب صوره يا طيب مبتدئين منه ومختتمي يوم تفرس في الفرس أنهم قد أنذروا بحلول البؤس والنقمي والنقمي
وباتي ونكيس رواح ومنصدئون كشمل أصحاب كسرى غير ملتئمي والنار خامدة الأنفاس من نسفين عليه والنهر ساه العين من سدمين وساء ساوة آن غادت بحيرتها ورد واردها بالغيل حين ظمي كأن بالنار ما بالماء من بللين حزنا وبالماء ما بالنار من ضرمي مولا يصلي وصالم دائما نبدا على حبيبك خير الخلق كلهم مولا يصلي وصالم دائما أبدا على حبيبك خير الخلق كلهم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته اللهم صل على سيدنا مولانا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا مولانا محمد وبارك وسلم مولا يصلي وسلم دائما أبدا على حبيبك خير خلقي كلهم